Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics. It's a new week. So, of course, we got three up, three down. We're talking about hot and cold comic book market trends, aren't we, Jack? Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and even though new comics may be paused, the market has not stopped. There are still trends moving upward, still trends that are getting colder, moving downward, and we have to talk about them every week right here on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. So we're, right, we're not going to hold it up right now. We're going to get into it right now, starting with those upward trends, and we are talking about carnage. So Carnage is definitely hot right now. We saw some heat a couple weeks ago when the title of that new Venom movie came out. But since then, on the back issues, on eBay sold listings, on all everyone's hot 10 listing or top 10 listings, we're seeing a lot of Carnage books. These were moving before, but even more so right now, aren't they, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, it truly almost made the list last week. It was at the last second, of, right when we were kind of getting ready to record, that we really started talking about Carnage. And if you remember, Brian, when you and I were recording, you and I were actually laughing about the reasoning for the spike in these Carnage books. Um, and everybody, and I got my Carnage Simpleman's comic shirt on right now, as a matter of fact, but everybody was talking about um, the, the, the title. But you and I laughed, um, and it's funny because we've been in this so long, we've seen books spike for so many different reasons. But we knew that the title shouldn't have been a mystery. Like, we knew, regardless of what they called the movie, we knew Carnage was going to be there. So I don't think that people should have needed necessarily the title. They, like, Carnage. reminded people, I guess. I think, that, I think that's very true. But I also think it's the case of the market, right? There's so little news flowing. We're looking for every reason for ebbs and flows and spikes and uh, books to pay attention to. So yeah, once that title came, especially in the world we live in where we don't know how fast certain projects are moving um, and what's going to resume quickly, what will not resume quickly once uh, we kind of get out of the pandemic situation. So I think with the new title of the movie, it solidified that this is a project moving forward. This is a project that we're going to see imminently. And it's one that people were willing to invest their money in. So we immediately started seeing sales of ASM 361. We started to see ASM 361 in the second print seeing uh, increases in sales. We're seeing books like 360, that, that Carnage cameo. All those Maximum Carnage tie-ins are doing very well. Uh, Maximum Carnage sets, uh, as well as ASM 344, the first Cletus Cassidy. All of those books are seeing uh, some kind of temporary spikes. And I call them temporary because as this news kind of subsides. These books will undoubtedly cool to a little bit. And we're talking a very small percentage. Um, it just they won't be driving upwards until we get that next snippet of information about the film. Yeah, because you've seen off and on heat on these on these books for, what, two years now? Ever since that yep. end credit scene in, in Venom or the word that Woody Harrelson was going to play Cletus Cassidy has been here on that book. And it's gone, like you said, ebbs and flows. Then the next one we're talking about for the three-up portion this week is Grimjack. A lot of people have been talking about Grimjack, and no doubt these books are definitely seeing an escalation in the market as well. Right. Now, we, we heard uh, several months ago that there was an adaptation on the way for Grimjack, and we got word this week that the Russos are moving forward with this adaptation. So we've seen price spikes of Grimjack 1. We've seen price spikes of Warp number 5, which is that first cameo appearance of Grimjack, as well as Star Slayer number 10, that first full appearance of Grimjack. All of these are seeing spikes. I'm really stunned by the pricing of Star Slayer 10. Uh, I've seen copies selling for $50, $60 and more uh, in raw. And this was a really a $20 to $30 book even after the previous spike. So, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, options are, uh, you know, they happen all the time, right? I'm starting to hear a lot of cynicism, Brian, in the community for, for option news. And I have to say that I sit and say that we can't just apply that cynicism to everything equally. Not all options are the same. So like the boom first look deal with Netflix is not the same. That's a, a company coming off the heels of their hottest year, signing with a streaming service that desperately needs content. This isn't the same. This is the Russo brothers. This is the team behind the Avengers. Um, the, if they're working on this, if this is something that they're doing, um, you know, they, it's going to be to a certain standard. This is the people behind community. And Yeah, you bring up a good point. I mean, I even said that I was did an interview on comics with Bueller's channel last week. And we talked about options, talking about how everything's being optioned. And you also bring up that point there. Everything's a lot of stuff's getting optioned, but you got to know enough about what the option news is, who's handling it. There's a lot of stuff in there that helps you make those choices on what books to pick up, what books to leave on the rack. But 
that stuff also you're not going to get from an app. That stuff you're not going to get from an alert. That stuff that you're not going to get from someone talking about a top 10. Because if they're talking about a top 10, you're too late on it and it's already gone up there. But either way, option news, there's still some gems out there. It's just like modern comics. I mean, how many comics get released every week? And every now and then you get the gem out of there. You just got to know which ones to pick. So great point. And Grimjack, I agree, is definitely hot this week. Then the last one we're going to talk about in the three up this week is we're talking about slab sales. We're talking about those graded comics, CGC, CBCS. Of course, if you want to sprinkle some PGX in there, not my flavor, but to each their own. But you are seeing escalation in graded sales. I don't know if it's because a lot of people have had some money, whether it's those checks that are coming in, if it's that tax returns laying over, or people are getting finding good deals. But you are definitely seeing people... I think also since there's no new comics coming out, people are buying for their PC or like you said, probably buying to hold on and maybe flip at a later date. Yeah, so we can speculate all day on why people have the resources or how they have the resources, whether or not it's the government stimulus checks, whether or not people are getting their tax refunds. But at the same point, I can think of negativities of the amount of um, unemployment rate that we have, the amount of people who have no really idea about future family planning financially. Um, it's impacted so many people. So I also think that that is also should be negatively impacting the market. But I actually think what we're seeing is a conscious decision. And this is just my feeling. Uh, I do a lot of research for our various shows uh, through eBay sold listings. And one of the keywords that I check is first appearance, F-I-R-S-T, and first one S-T, which uh, I suggest people add that to your repertoire. Don't just search one way, search a few different ways. Um, and while scrolling through pages and pages and pages of sales data, trying to see trends, right? Trying to see duplication, trying to see escalation, trying to see de-escalation. One thing I've noticed is just the amount of, and the grade hasn't mattered. I mean, eight fives or nine twos are books that you would typically deem unsexy. The amount of just general slab sales is really astounding to me. I, if you remember when we were first discussing comics in a public forum, one of our early discussions was to grade or not to grade, right? Like the, the, value of it is it is it is it false value are we are we entombing these amazing collectibles and i think in reality what we're seeing is we're seeing that the market has spoken on the longevity of a collection the, the ultimately protecting the value of the collection really lies in grading and i also think brian in these uncertain times when you're selling a raw book there's an element of you have to trust another person and how that transaction can go Versus a grading, a graded book where it just takes all that guesswork off the table. Yeah, so, that's what I was going to say is part of it also is maybe they're so careful with their money right now that buying a slab sale, you know what you're getting because it's got the third party, especially when it comes to order books, you don't have to worry about restoration, you don't have to worry about any of that. You know from a third party person that that grade is that grade because we all know there's some bad graders out there selling some raw books on eBay. And one thing that's really impressed me is the secondary market value of CBCS, which we desperately need as a community is if we talk about the monopoly of diamond, we can't have a monopoly in the grading industry, or there's no reason for checks and balances and competitiveness. And CBCS's secondary market values are starting to escalate to a point where they're getting very comparable to CGC. And I think that this back issue market that has been created has really lent itself well to that. Yeah, I agree. And I still like CBCS. I think I still stick to the fact that sometimes I think CBCS grades a little harder. I think they grade harder. And for me, at least, I'm a little new school. I, I came up in sports cards. I like the Beckett late, the cases over the PSA cases. I like the CBCS cases over the CGC cases. But that again, that's just me for my aesthetic. So there's a three up. That's about the... the the sexier of the picks, but we tend to like the three down portion because like we talk about on those upward trends, a lot of times that's reactive buying where on the downward trend, you can kind of be proactive and catch it for good buying opportunities and get stuff before it rebounds again, or just to add a PC at a cheap price. And we're going to get into the three down portion right now, starting with our first one. And we're going to talk about Flash. And this saddens me because Flash right now is probably one of my favorite comics to read but there hasn't been a Flash comic in a while, so I think it's kind of stalled that momentum. Either way, Joshua Williamson, fantastic run right now, and the previous Flash is just as good. So this I look at on multiple phases, Brian. Um, you and I are big fans of this Joshua Williamson Flash run, but it's really not just us. Like Anyone in the community who has read this book really loves it. it 
I, I liken it to the Zdarsky Daredevil run. The difference is the Zdarsky Daredevil run gets um, acclaim because I think it gets more attention coming from Marvel. And there's this kind of like negativity overall as far as readership goes with DC. Um, and, and we always have to kind of push to get people to read more DC stories. And I think Flash has long been overlooked. But I also think, and I've vented about this on several platforms. You know, I've talked about this even on LinkedIn with some of our business professionals. Um, I really believe that the comic book companies are not addressing the back issue market because they don't earn any income, but they're not seeing the value of relinking the back issue market with the industries where they Yeah, because you build equity in the future of the character that way. Right. So where this down portion really stems from is the fact that the flash has returned to the cw the, we're in the middle of a content just deprived state right we don't have stuff to watch there's no, new shows aren't coming um new movies aren't coming everybody's going back uh contagion and outbreak are getting massive streaming uh numbers uh, people are watching old stuff they're, and they're kind of forced to we're all forced to and then whenever anything new comes out like tiger king or the last dance on espn we're all watching in record numbers because there's really nothing else going on. And here the flash is coming out with in the middle of this and no one's talking about it. No one's talking about this return. And I think where they've messed up and where I bring up the back issue market, Brian, is they've really incorporated a lot of characters from Joshua Williamson's run. I mean, he should feel really good about himself. He wrote these comics in the last few years and from Godspeed to blood work has been, several other characters have shown up on the television screen. That's remarkable. But how many people in the comics community know that? How many people realize that Joshua Williamson is writing a, a, a run so strong that DC Comics and Warner Brothers feel like they can take this and immediately adapt it? And where else in comics are you seeing that? I don't think you're seeing that. I would argue anywhere else. That quick of an adaption, especially with a character with the rogues gallery and a longevity. Yeah, I think the second closest would be Walking Dead. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to go independent because it just doesn't happen in the big two, right? You have these characters that we love, X-23 and Miles Morales, and we're just kind of starting to, like, scratch the surface of these characters 15, 20 years later, right? And here you are, you're getting characters that are recently created. So I think DC should be promoting when a character pr appears on the television show, they should be putting up social media graphics highlighting the first appearance of these characters in the run, highlighting the, the stories and trade paperbacks that feature these characters. They should be integrating the comics with the multimedia yeah. side that you're seeing. Put the old comics in the show as well. Have people reading the old. <laughs> you know, do, they, there's things that can be done. Um, even at the end, imagine a placard at the end where they said, you know, if you'd like to read comics featuring blood work, go see flash number this through this you know i to me those little subtleties can do a lot for an industry especially an industry that we're all sitting here saying needs something right it, it's just the we've seen this the the second we had a slowdown in the business look at how it impacted us so that tells us we're not operating at a full health level and these are the kind of things i look at the companies and go you know, everyone's passing the buck saying they need to do something, they need to do something, and this is something that the companies can do. Yeah, and that's crazy because that's across the industry. They, the, the, the movies and shows, they have the source material from the books, but you don't ever see them like you said, put a placard up and said, yep. as seen in this book. Uh, yeah, and I just think it would, it would do so much for the – it if nothing else, it validates – the comic book market, which then in turn allows them to have a healthy market to continue to get new IP and source material from in the future. Yeah, and plus you get more people watching the show because they'd, yep. they'd watch for the end credit to see what book they need to go get. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Next one we're talking about the three down portion this week is retailer exclusives. Yes, they are down. And yes, we have a retailer exclusive as a channel sponsor, but that doesn't I mean, truth is truth. We are seeing retail exclusives. There's some outliers as always, yep. but as a whole, at a macro level, we're seeing retail exclusives kind of on the downward trend right now. Yeah, and our, re our sponsor is an example of one of those outliers because his Batman Adventures Returns Har Harley Quinn cover by Peach Loco has done exceptionally well and has really made a dent in the market. And there have been others out there. I know there was like a Warren Lau one that's I think KRS did, somebody else did. So there is the ability to penetrate. But what we're seeing is these retailers who really relied on this market are struggling. And 
if you're someone, and this is why we work with full disclosure, Frankie's comics, because we like the way that they go about doing business. They've gone about doing business in a manner where they didn't feel this need and pressure during this time period. So they've been focused on future releases. And I can just tell you that you are going to see some covers coming out in the future, especially if you like Peach Momoko, it, you are going to see some covers in the future that are going to get the market's attention. So that's where Kevin Fields from Frankie's Comics has put his attention. Other stores have focused on like deep discounts and driving um, massive sales. Uh, others have focused, like I think Frankie's has also done some of this, some, with really developing their communities. So like the Facebook groups and things like that. But in general, we you no know, new comics has been no retail or exclusives, and without the kind of constant push to these websites, I think some of the back catalog of these books have slowed down. Now, again, not to a, a, a complete halt because the second there was talk about that uh, Venom Five Scan retailer exclusive variant possibly being a, a the first cover of of Null, and then that changed in three and the late printing is now the book to get regardless comics politics everybody ran to that book so yes outliers exist but on the whole the market has kind of died and it'll be really interesting to see when this starts back up brian what do you think do you think we're going to see i think tons of stores are going to do exclusives as soon as this thing opens back up to try to get that cash flow rolling again yeah, I definitely think you're going to see some because also with Marvel start, starting to print more. And again, Marvel, you order exclusive. It's what, 3,000 right out the gate right there. Yep. So 3,000 from Marvel, 3,000 from DC, 1,000 from IDW, at least 500 from Boom Studios. I think, I think what you'll see is you won't see a pause on the exclusives coming out. Now, if they do that and then you see the market kind of shy away from it at first, you might see some incentives. But once it gets going again, it's just going to be back to where it was. Yeah, I would, I would honestly expect to see the publishers include more incentives for retailers when we come back. Yeah. But the last one we're going to talk about on the three down portion is this is one that we talked about kind of on a couple videos on our channel with we're going to talk about market negativity. And by saying that we were ones that we thought with the situation that's going on, you're going to see a lot of I won't say negativity, but there was going to be some downside here that we were going to deal with as far as LCSs and uh we, got, we thought there'd be a lot more buying opportunities, people like trying to get rid of stuff to, 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 to make some money on the side. But either way, the market really hasn't, you've seen some change, right? Some buying opportunities, but nothing to like how we thought, right, Jack? Right. And this is where I got to be honest. Um, I got, I might, man, I might ruffle some feathers with this one, man, but I honestly think speculation and investing has saved the collectibles market through this downtime. And the reason why I say that is, and I, and I want to say in full disclosure, my love for the comics is a love for comics. It's not, it has nothing to do with investing or reselling, but the fact that so much value has been put into these books so much, um, so many people have their hands in that area of the collecting during this down economy the back issue market was able to continue to flow with great books, with great pricing. Um, a lot of people had plenty of inventory, plenty of stock. Um, a lot of people I think were able to supplement their income. And, and I'm not just seeing that with comics. I'm also seeing that in the sports card market and the toy market where you're seeing the market not take the hit that a lot of people thought. You definitely uh, saw like double the amount of Facebook auctions. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's what you've seen. You've seen, way more Facebook auctions. We've seen way more live auctions on YouTube. Um, people have had to get creative, right? And this is where I don't mean to talk negatively. There are probably stores out there who have done everything right and have still gone out of business. But for the most part, most of the stores that went out went out early and they went out because they were probably like fighting not to go out of business anyway. They were already on the prefaces of that. It, they couldn't afford to miss a couple weeks of income. Um, and if your business is operating at that level, it's kind of only a matter of time before something happens that puts you in that situation. Um, and even the stores who are barely holding on, man, if they can just hold on, they are going to be able to learn tools to be able to help them survive in the new, in the new kind of economy that we've got in the new world. Hopefully they've been able to develop their communities. Like we talked about in the previous segment, hopefully they've been able to develop their other avenues for sales. Hopefully they've learned not to just focus on new release comics and to have a healthy supply of that. 
hopefully they've learned all of these things. And either way, you know, I, I tend to get tired of market negativity because we hear it all the time. Like, when's the bubble going to burst? When is this all going to come crashing down? And I tend to be real positive and say, well, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't, if you're expecting the early nineties, I don't think it's going to happen. It's a new world we live in. There's information abound. It's not the whole market got duped. That can't happen again. The whole world is aware now, starting in 2008 with yes. the movie called Iron Man. And since then, everyone is aware how big comics are. Right. The values are, are there. You know, at Gary Vaynerchuk, a guy who, um, Gary V, who has really popularized investing in sports cards, even he made the comment, comics are a better investment. He said, Iron Man can't get hurt. Because yes, comic books are safer and Iron Man doesn't get hurt, but you have to wait three years for something to happen to a comic book, a new movie comes out. And that's just the reality. Um, So I I think as long as that continues to be a trend, values are always going to be semi-protected because so many people in our generation, they've invested their personal finances, not just in stocks or in bonds or in property the way that our parents generation did but also put it into collectible coins and sports cards and comic books and these things that we loved as a child that we see that value and that i think generations to come are going to continue to see that value especially with as you mentioned the movies that are going to continue to happen i i I don't want to hear any more of that bubble burst talk yeah it's crazy i mean i think i still think there's some be some great changes that come out of it but we saw the economy pretty much shut down over the past few months, past month and a half or yep. whatever. And the first thing you think to go would be something like comics, right? Cause it's not a necessity, yep. but we actually saw the market survive. We saw people do innovative things to get the books out in front of people. There's still some buying power there. So either way, I, and I think also you're not going to see that bubble pop because right now the generation Xers, the people that are at that age with the disposable income. Now we grew up, like you just said, we grew up, collecting things, collecting toys, collecting cards, collecting pogs, collecting whatever it was. So we have that ingrained in us and there's always something out there where people, like I always say, I'm, I buy my, a lot of my stuff pure nostalgia driven. So whenever I find something from like the Hades in a comic book, I buy them up. Well, and you mentioned your show with uh, Bueller earlier on the show, um, which was a great interview. One of the topics you guys talked about is the all digital. And that's another one where I sit and go, I refuse to believe that this industry will ever go all digital. It takes the collecting out of it. And if you take the collecting out of it, you're taking away so much of what matters and so much of your community. Um, you just can't do that. Yeah. And you see, I'm trying to do that right now. When you talk about sports cards, you see tops, you see all these other people that are do, trying to do these panini and all these things with apps with collecting cards on there. Yep. No way does it have the same effect as it does as a physical nope. good. And they still have to se- send you the physical good afterwards or else people don't feel invested. Yeah in the product. So it ends up just being digital first more than it ends up being um, per se a digital product. And and the market's already spoken on that. I want that hard good in my hand so that I can feel like I actually have ownership over that. So either way, that's three up, three down this week. Let us know in the comments. What do you guys think of the three up? What do you think of the three down? We talked about a lot of great trends this week. And as you can see on the screen right now, we're putting some of the comments from last week's video on. So make sure you comment so we can feature those comments on our next video. And do us a favor, click that thumbs up button because it really helps us out. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Click that bell notification because we do a lot of comic and pop culture content on this channel. That way you'll be notified whenever those videos drop. This has been Jack and Brian with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.